I have a favorite office chair. I love this thing. It's broken in. I don't want to get rid of it. But I broke one of the casters. It's plastic. It's thing split. I tried gluing it. I tried melting it back together. Nothing would hold. So I thought, okay, I'm going to have to buy a new set of casters. But then I had someone tell me, I got a whole bunch of them. Give me your address. I'll ship you a set. Perfect. Thank you. But I needed something to hold my chair. So I 3D printed a PLA ball about the same size and stuck it on the chair. But how well will a ball made of PLA plastic actually work? I mean, people tell me it'll crack under pressure, it'll deform, it'll shrink, it'll crush. So did it work? I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Here's the original caster that broke. This thing is plastic, but it's held up for a long time. As you can see, it's split. And I also tried to melt this together and glue it together. Nothing seemed to work, no matter what I tried. As soon as I put the pin in it, put the weight on it, it would just split. So I was able to get the pin out easily from the chair and also out of the old caster. And here's a universal caster that I could get, get a set of these for around 25 bucks. But I decided to just take the measurements and then see if I could reproduce something in Tinkercad. And in my opinion, this is a perfect job for Tinkercad. I just grabbed the ball element brought it over, and then resized it to 55 millimeter diameter. So you can see X, Y, and Z all the same. I didn't even touch the steps. I kept it rough because I could have made it smoother, but I said, the heck with it. And then I cut the bottom off so it would be flat, just the bottom five millimeters. And I did that by just bringing in a whole element, a square hole, and then reshaped it like this. So when I group these together, it's going to cut it off. And then I took a whole cylinder and made a hole in the center of it for the pin to go into. And for that, I made it slightly smaller than the pin, 7.9 by 7.9, and 38 millimeters long, though it sits 10 millimeters below the, the bed. And so if you can see, it goes more than halfway, and the pin should fit in here, no problem, nice and tight. Then I just grouped all of these together, and I have my .stl file that I can export and 3D print to put on my chair. And for this project, I had some Inland PLA Plus in red, already installed, so I decided to just use that. I actually printed this on my A1 Mini, and it took less than an hour and a half. It was like an hour and 28 minutes, I think, to print it all. Now I just had to make sure it fit the pin. And what I found in my A1 Mini is the holes come out almost perfect. Squares and holes come out really accurate, and the pin slid right in nice and tight. I only had to tap it a little bit. And then it fit right on the chair. Height-wise, I got that right. It was just slightly less than the other casters. And this thing looked like it was going to work perfectly. So it's time to test it. So here it is on the chair. And there's nothing in it. It really doesn't serve much purpose other than balance things out. But when I put my big butt in it, now it's got to do some work. And I can feel the drag when I move. But actually, it's a good thing. Because sometimes I would lean back in my chair... And the chair would like move because the casters were too free. But this thing, it actually stays in position because of that ball. So I've actually found I like this thing on my chair. I recently did a video where I made hooks to hold cabinets like this to pegboard. And I got a lot of comments from people that it's not going to last. I should use different plastic. PLA is not going to work. It sags. It droops. It You know, there are all kinds of things. Well, I didn't believe any of that because I've had this thing on my chair for nine months. The casters that I was promised to be sent never came. I forgot about it. And I like this on the chair so much, I left it. Until recently, I thought, I wonder how it's looking on the bottom. So I took it off, and it has worn. It's definitely got some wear marks on the bottom, but it's not worn through that I'm seeing the you know infill which is close to 95%, so there's still crosses in there. But it's, this thing is holding up, and I really don't want new casters. So I'm going to put this back on, see how long it lasts. But the idea that PLA can't hold up for something like this is really, it's not true. It depends on the application. Now, if this was under heat where this would get soft, yeah, definitely not recommended. But in this case, this thing has been beaten up, it's been dragged, it's been, and tons of weight sitting on it. Trust me, I know I'm not, no lightweight. And 
this is held up beautifully. So my hooks for these, I've been looking at them. They haven't sagged. They haven't done nothing. They're doing great. So it just shows that, yeah, you can print it in other materials. And if you do, maybe check out PCBWay.com. Because not only do they supply circuit boards, they have a 3D printing service. And that 3D printing service can take your .stl file and it can print it in all kinds of plastics. So if you've got a printer, but it can't do some of these high-end plastics, you can get it right here at PCBWay.com. You can even get aluminum if you want. And there's other features you can get for it. You can get part marking or parts assembly if you got multiple parts. And they'll give you a quote right there online. So if you want to 3D print something that's beyond your 3D printer's capability, check out PCBWay.com. A PLA will surprise you sometimes. And in this case, it works beautifully. If you've got a practical print where PLA saved the day, let me know about it in the comments below. I want to give a special shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for everything you do for the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.